Arbitration is a tool that can be used by defendants particularly, but also by plaintiffs. So you may sue a debt collector, sue a credit card company, and they may say, hey, now we want to force you into arbitration. Or you may choose, if you've been sued by a debt collector or a credit card company, to force them into arbitration. Well, what we're going to look at in this case, this is the Morgan versus Sundance case from the U.S. Supreme Court. We're going to look at this idea of has a defendant waited too long before saying, okay, now I want to force arbitration? Have they waived or given up their right to arbitration? And is there a requirement to for the court to say, hey, you waived your right? Is there a requirement that the other side be prejudiced? And just to give this away, the answer is no on the prejudice. And almost every federal court got this wrong. And here we have the U.S. Supreme Court saying in a unanimous decision, think about that, not very often that at least we hear about that in the news. We always hear about these like bitter, divided opinions by the U.S. Supreme Court. All justices said, hey, there is no requirement of prejudice. So I want us to look at this in case we are suing a debt collector, a uh, mortgage company, sometimes we still see arbitration agreements with mortgage companies, a, a credit card company, a car dealer, and somebody is now bringing up the idea of arbitration, or maybe we have been sued and we want to use arbitration, or maybe we want to sort of offensively use arbitration. It's important to know kind of the lay of the land to understand what we're dealing with here. And this also shows us how even though courts may say for many, many years, this is the law, it may be that they're wrong. And this is an example. So this came out May of this year. And we'll skip down here to, uh, we've got Justice Kagan, unanimous court here. And so here's the Federal Arbitration Act. That's the law that says, you know, we're going to ignore each individual state law that may or may not approve of arbitration. We're just making a uniform federal standard. And uh, it entitles the defendant to file an application to stay the litigation. If you saw the video from a few days ago from the 11th Circuit, this is what is normally done. The defendant says, hey, stop the litigation, stay the litigation, make the plaintiff, the one that sued me, go to arbitrate. It says, but defendants do not always seek that relief right away. Sometimes they you know, do litigation before deciding they would fare better in arbitration. Here's the question. Has the defendant's request to switch to arbitration come too late? So very simple question the Supreme Court's asking. And courts have held that a party can waive its arbitration right by litigating only when its conduct has prejudiced the other side. So that's what all the courts have said. And now the U.S. Supreme Court is saying, is that proper? Is that actually what the law is? And so they say it does not. Let me see here. Maybe can make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, so what happened was Morgan is an hourly employee at a Taco Bell franchise, and he brings a collective action under the Fair Labor Standards Act. So typically that's going to be, you didn't pay me proper overtime, or you didn't uh, count the, the breaks correctly. And so here we have pay overtime, work more than 40 hours in a week, and Sundance initially defended itself as if no arbitration agreement existed. So they filed an answer that said uh, it said nothing about arbitration. But then later, eight months later, they changed course. And Sundance says, hey, we want to stop or stay the litigation and compel arbitration. And so this happened in the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals. And so the courts below applied Eighth Circuit precedent to decide the waiver issue. Now, here's a way to think about it. I've got you know this very fancy writing here on the side. Waiver is saying, let's look at the defendant. Did you do something inconsistent with choosing arbitration? In other words, did you wait a long time? Have you given up or waived your right? And then they added this requirement of there has to be prejudice to the plaintiff. So waiver is looking at it from the perspective of the defendant. And prejudice is, well, did that harm the plaintiff? So if you remember from the 11th Circuit case we did a few days ago, there was a, the question about 
uh, arbitration was compelled and the plaintiff went to jams arbitration and the defendant refused to pay that. And they said, ah, oh, you, you, you can go to AAA instead. And the court said, hey, defendant, you waived your right and you prejudice or harm the plaintiff. Well, we're going to learn from this case, we don't need that prejudice anymore. So it makes waiver easier to find. That's good if you have a defendant trying to compel arbitration against you. If you're the defendant, you got to be careful of that. Okay, so let's look here. Prejudice requirement is not a feature of federal law of waiver law generally. So just saying in general, like forget about arbitration, just the the law of waiver, we don't have to find prejudice. So why is that built into arbitration? And so it says the Eighth Circuit adopted it because of the federal policy favoring arbitration. And so district court found the prejudice requirement satisfied, but the Court of Appeals disagreed and sent the case to arbitration. And so again, let's make sure we're on the same page. The district court, the trial court said, you know what? I found you waived it and you prejudiced the plaintiff. So there's no arbitration. But the Court of Appeals says, no, no, no. We don't think that there's any prejudice. So you have to go to arbitration. And so this was a split decision. Two judges ruled in favor of the defendant. One disagreed or dissented. So the majority reason parties not yet begun formal discovery or contested any matters going to the merits and then we have this Judge Culleton dissenting or disagreeing and said he raised doubts about the prejudice requirement that's not needed for waiver. And so he argues that, hey, guys, we got it wrong. So the U.S. Supreme Court always gets to choose whether to take a case. So they agreed to take it. And they say nine circuits. And, you know, we have the First Circuit all the way through the Eleventh Circuit. Then we have the Federal Circuit. And so... You know, this is a pretty big percentage of the number of court of appeals. Nine have invoked a strong federal policy favoring arbitration. And so they require prejudice. Two circuits rejected that rule. We do too. So just an example, as I've written over here, the majority can be wrong. Okay. Now you have to live with it until it gets changed. But just understand the majority of courts can be wrong. So they say we're deciding a single issue. And that's all we're deciding is this idea of prejudice. It says court of appeals, including the Eighth Circuit, have generally resolved cases like this as a matter of federal law using terminology of waiver. We consider only the next step in their reasoning that they may create arbitration specific variants of federal procedural rules like those concerning waiver based on the Federal Arbitration Act's policy favoring arbitration. And the, the court says, you can't do that. You got it wrong. And so it gets into a little bit of detail here. But I think if you're interested in arbitration, this will be interesting to you. So outside of arbitration context, we don't ask about prejudice. We just say, look, all we're looking at is for the waiver. Did you intentionally relinquish or abandon a known right? So our sort of imagine the, the cameras pointed solely at the defendant. That's all we're asking about. To decide whether a waiver has occurred, the court focuses on the actions of the person who held the right. So this would be the defendant. The court seldom considers the effects of those actions on the opposing party. And then they cite to this judge in that dissenting opinion, the Eighth Circuit, a waiver normally is effective without proof of detrimental reliance. It'd be kind of a similar way of saying prejudice. And so the Eighth Circuit applies the law found nowhere else consider it a bespoke rule or like a specific rule just for arbitration. They say that's just wrong. So this derives from a decades old Second Circuit decision. That's from 1968. So think about that. 1968, 50 years would be 2018. So we're talking 54 years. This has been in the law. In the U.S. Supreme Court, in a unanimous decision, everybody, conservative, liberal, everybody saying, guys, you got it wrong. So they say, here's what the Second Circuit is talking about. An overriding federal policy favoring arbitration. Waiver of arbit right to arbitrate is not to be lightly inferred. Mere delay without some resultant prejudice cannot carry the day. And then that rule and its reasoning spread. Circuit after circuit justify adopting a prejudice requirement based on the liberal national policy favoring arbitration. And here's where the Supreme Court goes, guys, you've missed this. The policy favoring arbitration does not authorize federal courts to invent special arbitration preferring procedural rules. 
is say it's merely an acknowledgement to overrule the judiciary's longstanding refusal to enforce agreements to arbitrate. So let me just stop there. Most states, most courts, before the federal law came into effect, said we just have a policy that arbitration, binding arbitration, mandatory arbitration is not allowed in our state. Alabama certainly had that. And so the FAA, that Federal Arbitration Act, is just simply saying, hey, we want a level playing field. But it's not to make arbitration special or to give enhanced benefits to arbitration. It just says don't treat it differently than any other contractual provision. So policies make arbitration as enforceable as other contracts, but not more so. Court must hold the party to its arbitration contract just as the court would any other kind. Court may not devise novel rules to favor arbitration over litigation. And it says if you have an ordinary procedural rule, whatever that is, I like how the court puts this, whether a waiver, a forfeiture, or what have you, would counsel against enforcement, then so be it. The federal policy is about treating arbitration contracts like all others, not about fostering or encouraging or favoring arbitration. And they say, you know, the text of the FAA makes that clear. And then we can come down to this part here. So stripped of its prejudice requirement, the Eighth Circuit's current waiver inquiry focus on Sundance's conduct. Did Sundance knowingly relinquish the right to arbitrate by acting inconsistently? The Court of Appeals may resolve that question or determine different procedural framework is appropriate. Our sole holding today is that it may not make up a new procedural rule based on the Federal Arbitration Act's policy favoring arbitration. So they vacate the judgment. So they're saying, we're not telling you what answer to reach. We're just saying, if you're going to use waiver, and basically every court uses the idea of waiver here, then that's all you ask. Did the defendant waive their right to arbitrate? You don't get into, and did that hurt the plaintiff? Did it prejudice the plaintiff? You don't do that. So again, I wanted you to see this because arbitration for consumers is becoming a very, very powerful rule. Defendants still use arbitration when we sue them. They still sometimes want to force us into arbitration. But more and more consumers and consumer lawyers are recognizing the power of arbitration, even when we offensively are going after an abusive debt collector, a credit card company that is mistreating us or doing false credit reporting. And so it's really important to understand what exactly are the rules in arbitration. And this opinion that we just went over changed, what do we say, 54 years of law in the United States. So hope you found that interesting. If you like this type of stuff, we'll continue to put out these case videos and just you know hit the subscribe button and then you should be notified. Maybe hit the notification bell and that way you'll You'll know it better. So you guys have a great day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.